Hi, today we talk to three authors who have penned cookbooks on Filipino cuisine. Our first guest is a Singaporean cake shop owner who got exposed to Filipino food through his family's household help. Driven by interest and intrigue, he roamed the country and came up with a thorough record of home-cooked dishes from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, named Milkier Pegs and Violet Gold, which is now, I believe, on its third edition. Let's all welcome Brian Paul. Hey! Also joining us as chef was been on an extensive food tour, promoting Filipino cuisine via pop-up dinners all over the U.S., Canada, Mexico, and Colombia. It is called the Salo Project, an initiative that actually started while she was in the process of self-discovery. She documents her experiences and recipes in a cookbook called No Forks Given. Let's say hello to Yana Albuena. Hi! Hi, Yana. <laughs> from San Francisco. Lastly, we have someone who has been an active ambassador in promoting Filipino cuisine all over the world. Far from speaking from Madrid Fusion, he has also done dinners abroad and penned a good number of food books, including Philippine Cookery from Heart to Platter, which was years in the making, and Descartes Sa Cucina, which is full of cooking know-hows and hacks. Completing our panel is Chef Tatong Sarsao. Hello! Hi. Simple! <laughs> Hi, Chef. He's joining us from Manila. Okay, so let's talk about cookbooks. Can we start with Brian? Let um, everyone know about your cookbook. Can you talk about Milkier Pigs? We call them Milkier Pigs because the first edition, which was released many, many, many years ago, uh, was called Milk Pigs. And when, we, when I went around traveling, adding more material, I had to reformat the book quite extensively. And so when I showed it to a publisher friend, he didn't publish the book, I did it. Uh, but he kind of said, I, I'm not quite sure if, if the same title is a good idea, just because it's a completely different beast. Um, and yet some people didn't know about Milk Pigs, and so we just kind of wrote on that and just played the title a little bit, you know. How did you end up featuring of all cuisines, Filipino cuisine? It's true that I did grow up eating uh, Filipino food. I ate very, very well because I had yayas who really spoiled me. You know, I, 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 and I, to a huge extent, I took it for granted. So I, I, I was a journalist for a while, a freelance journalist, and I was sent to um, the Philippines to cover uh, a certain uh, detox establishment. And okay. actually, <laughs> it was ironic that, I, that, that that was my very first time in the Philippines. And right after that, um, right after my, my little writing trip, um, the husband of my then house helper uh, took me around to eat. I think it, it finally dawned on me how, how little I knew and how much I've taken for granted. 
You know what I mean? Because it's some Filipino food is a lot of it is similar, and yet it's quite quite different in terms of the flavor profile, textures, and so that really is what got me thinking about it very very seriously. I knew quite early on that it would be a regional approach, just talking to people, getting an idea of what of what Philippine cuisine was about. And of course, talking with my help, with my domestic help at the time, um, I had, as I said, my yaya, she was from the Ilocos. But I also had house helpers from Mindanao, from, Gen, you know, especially Jensan and Butuan. I had um, helpers from the Visayas as well. All of these women uh, influenced how I was going to lay this particular book out. But really, I couldn't I I couldn't really um, I just had a very vague idea of what I was going to do. Um, I had to go to the Philippines to really get an understanding of what I was tackling, and that mm. first research trip was yeah indeed just over ten years ago. Wow! So how long did it take you to travel around the Philippines and do your book? I would say that for the first edition, nearly three odd years, three mm. odd years. And so I've been going on and off to the Philippines for about 10 years now. And the last research trip, which was a few months ago. Yeah. And I guess that's one of the beauty about, you know, the Philippines. <laughs> Whenever you go back, you learn something new. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really humbling. And, uh, I, and people have been very warm and very generous. And so what I have often said is that I don't think I could have written it without the people, really. Uh -huh. in, a way, I feel, in a way, I feel more like the conduit. <laughs> You know, I, I'm just a mouthpiece, but mm -hmm. but uh, the, pe the 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 folks I've met have they make it very easy to write. How about you, Yana? For, for those who are not in the know, can you tell us about the Salo project? What what did you do during the tour? So for the Salo project, um, I did a tour do, doing Kamayan pop up dinners. So this was obviously pre COVID. <laughs> And we're all like, yes, let's celebrate eating with our hands. It's the best thing ever. And it was also during the time that I think Filipino food, there was a Filipino food movement like coming here in America, or there was like some sort of renaissance. And so they were, you know, LA, New York, San Francisco. But I was also thinking, I was like, well, the rest of America, there's a lot of Filipinos in, the, in America in general. Um, why is it that Filipino food is not as common as like everyone else in Southeast Asia? So I was like, mm -hmm. well, if they can't go to these places, these hot spots where Filipino food is so, you know, trendy, like I'll just go to them. So I did 50 states, 50 weeks. Um, and it was, um, to be honest, very grueling. And I'm so glad I was quite young when I did it <laughs> because I don't know if I can do it again. <laughs> oh, have you stopped doing it? Well, every week, like a pop-up every week. It's like, uh, and then not only that, it's in a different state, in a different city. So yeah. it's like trying to find where I'm going to sleep, you know, um, yeah. where can I find an Asian market, um, who can host these dinners and who's gonna come to these dinners. So um, it was pretty much a like a one woman show because I didn't really have support. Like also as an immigrant, like I didn't really know people in America. <laughs> so it was like, okay, let's just try Facebook and like do couch surfing and we'll see how it goes. It's like setting up a restaurant every week. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> and taking it down and bringing it back. <laughs> After I finished the tour, um, I didn't really think I was gonna write a book. Like that, that was not something that I even considered. And when I was waiting for my citizenship um, and I had to stay in the US for a year, um, so that's when I was like, well, if I can't travel, what do I do? And then my friends were like, I think you should process what you did. You know, it's like you, you did a whole tour of the U.S. for one year. I think you should write about it. So in a sense, like my friends were the ones that like pushed me to do the book. Crazy, but kudos to you for doing that. Well, thank you. So, <laughs> uh, talk to us about your book. So the book is, is part of a cookbook, part memoir, because I 
you know, a, a lot of it is more about my journey, but it's also about um, how I adapted some of the Filip well, not just some, but most of the Filipino dishes into and translated it into like the American market because there's a lot of things that are not available here in America. So I have to substitute it and have to adapt to the seasonality, the locality, um, and pretty much what's available really. So I wanted to showcase the stories of the people that I met. So kind of like Brian's where it's like a narrative. Like I want people to kind of, you know, be on this tour with me. Mm. Right. How about that one? How many books have you done already? Oh my God. Um, <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have three and I'm uh, publishing one this year as well. Yeah. Okay, it's quite, it's quite of COVID. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Wait, so the first one is? The first one is uh, Philippine from Cookery Platter. from yeah. Heart to Platter, which took me around six years to 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 make. No, because um, when I started, I didn't know the direction of the book. You know, we're just like I decided to like specialize in Filipino cooking, but there wasn't much material available. There was like a Doreen and a little, a few more authors, and parang. How do you how do you specialize in Filipino cuisine if you don't really know much about it? So that's when I started that journey to like collecting, doing research. It came to a point that I had so much material and decided like oh, I think this 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 could work as a as a book. So I started like reformatting all my you know writing and composing and all that uh, until it you know. Became a book eventually after after six years. So yes. yeah, that, that's how I started. Then I have another book. It's Rice to the Occasion, which is rice recipes. And okay. um, the third book is um, Discarte sa Cucina. It's written in conversational Filipino because um, well, I, I have I have the problem at home. Like every time you work with someone, someone new, you have a new helper. Or you have you have someone working with you. You have to go back to the basics all the time. And sometimes, if if parang, if you're too exposed to the chef world, parang, it's a totally different dynamic. You know, working cooking at home and cooking in in, yeah. in the restaurant. So I really had to like contextualize everything and explain things very simply to people every time I had to hire. So I said, oh, why not? Why not? Uh, write a book on this oh, so yeah. that we could pitch yeah like you know, uh, uh you hire some uh, j j just read that before we, we start doing anything because like, like a yeah. 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 you know the, the reality of the tourism industry in the philippines is that 80 percent uh, fnb 80 percent of the people who work in the industry actually do not go to culinary school have not gone to culinary school um especially if you go to the provinces let's say some have been like farmers and they get work in the kitchen or you know fishermen getting work in the kitchen or just like nurses getting work in the kitchen or all that so sometimes it's really difficult to go back to the basics and align everyone because i'm from Cebu, i talk with a lot of cebuano cooks or executive chefs and they said you know we have a problem when when giving instructions to people because they don't get it because like for example the local language has very limited culinary terms so they only know i adobo i afritada i caldereta so they think of those terms as techniques so that's the only way they cook everything the lack of culinary terms in the dialects also around makes it difficult for the people in the provinces to learn more techniques so you really yeah. have to you know explain to it on a more technical sense using their language so that they'll be able to adapt to a more professional scenario so that's that's my third book nice no i'm <laughs> sure the journey to coming up with the book wasn't smooth sailing the whole way through what were some um, of the challenges that you guys encountered along the way and how did you address those problems this is my first and i think i might write another book but the challenge was self-published there was a lot of things that I didn't know about the book industry in general or the publishing industry. So one challenge was trying to get it into the hands of a publisher. Um, and there was just like so many things that like you have to get an agent, you need to have like a manuscript and all these things that, you know, and can you give them the market? Like, can you show them that this book will sell? 
And I think that's, um, I don't know if that's true in, you know, in Asia, but especially here in the US, they're very concerned about their, you know, like yeah. the margin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah. Sell? <laughs> like how many can we sell, you know? Yeah. So it doesn't matter how good your book is, if they don't think there's a market for it, it's, they're not gonna pick it up. I encountered someone who was like, oh, I don't wanna represent you because I'm already representing another Filipino chef. And I was like, oh, I didn't know there was a quota. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you got so many white, you know, authors out there doing, exactly. you know, and there's no limit apparently to how many keto cookbooks there are, but when it comes to Filipino food, oh. You can only be one. <laughs> I know, and I was like, come on. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't see that that was like um, a hindrance until, you know, like this is systemic, you know, racial bias and all of that mm -hmm. stuff that, you know, obviously a lot of Americans are rallying and protesting about right now. What was the uh, toughest part of producing your book? Gosh, producing it or you mean the research or the... <laughs> the, the, whole, the whole process. The whole thing. Researching it was quite tricky because when I first began, as mm -hmm. Chef mentioned, actually, I, I'm, I'm, forgive me, Chef. I'm not quite sure of the timelines here. <laughs> but, I, but, but, but I do remember about even ten years ago that um, mm -hmm. resources, material was very, very mm -hmm. limited. Yeah, very limited. Yeah. Now it's everywhere on everywhere. Now, Instagram. Everyone's an expert. <laughs> right? Now, everyone's doing it. Everyone, you know, you, 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 you could, you could find someone in, in, for example, in Tawi Tawi. Yeah. Yeah. with the answers you're looking for on Instagram or, 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 or you, you, you could find a contact mm. back yeah. then it was far more difficult and so you had in a way you had to be there and you had to earn people's trust basically something I've learned is that everyone's food is is unique and so when you go to a particular province you say, oh, this is my speciality and these are my dishes and I've, I've often found it has taken me it took me an embarrassingly long time, but, be, but maybe it's because I'm not from the Philippines, um, to actually realize that there, there were certain things that mm. existed in many, many parts of the country. Mm. And so it took me quite a few years to actually have the guts to ask to, to, to approach people and ask them from different regions, is this available here? Do you have something like this here? Mm. And writing that down, and just making sure that I didn't say anything incorrect. Yeah. Mm. Because it's so easy to fall into that trap of saying that this yeah. comes from this region. And then yeah. someone yeah. writes on, on your Facebook, actually, no, we have it too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which has happened, which has happened. And I mean, fine, you know, it's, it's part of the learning process. Yeah. But, so do you wish that yeah. you would have done the book now instead of a decade ago? Oh, I don't know. Honestly speaking, I don't know if I did it now, if... If that be a point, because so many people know about. I mean, a, a lot, of, a lot yeah. of the, because of Instagram and Facebook, social media. Huh. Um, a lot of the questions I was asking are being asked on social media now, and they are being answered. Yeah. So I think it's a very, very yeah. It's a it's a really hard question to answer. Tato, the most challenging part of making your book. I think I think the start was um, really difficult, especially when. You don't have a reputation as an author, so even if you finish your book and you release it, people will be like, who the hell is this guy? Why is he writing about <laughs> Filipino food? So that was really one hurdle I was, you know, really worried about. But the research itself was really quite difficult because you had to gather a lot of information. Even before finishing the book, we, we I asked I asked help from some people at UP to do like a uh, reading research, like they they, they kind of gathered all the material on Filipino food that has been written before my book was to be published just to make sure that I don't duplicate what other people had said because yeah, uh, there yeah, was yeah, no yeah, point yeah, yeah. if I if I write even if it was a great book but I'm just saying what Doreen has already written yeah. Yeah. What, was the, what was the point of uh, writing yeah. the whole book and the problem of linguistics as well like we're I'm talking about something, but it has a totally different meaning in another part of the region. And you're you're arguing, but you're talking about the same thing. You know, <laughs> I really work hard to to promote the book, and I think that's that's the that's the biggest challenge uh, for 
for for um a lot of water it's really the promotion yeah. that's why like like even even if i'm with my publisher i i'd say like 70 percent of the effort of promotion is really my personal effort uh, yeah. you know it's, it's 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 really difficult like they're they're so uh they just make sure it's on the shelves they make sure that they have their initial press releases and you know you know that that basic stuff but all the rest you have to you really have to do on your own very, very true. yeah so so i think the work of you know like being able like for 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 brian or angelo you you know that to be able to have your next book you really have to work so very, much very harder hard. after the book is published to yeah. make sure you have another book sometimes you the amount of personal time you invest in writing a book is not you know commensurate to what you earn mm -hmm. you know from 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 the sales it's difficult to sell book um yeah. if you rely on royalties it sounds like it sounds royal <laughs> there's nothing i really enjoy writing writing the books and you know and i try to you know make make financial sense about what i'm doing through other endeavors Yes. Mm -hmm. you know so that's why we have I have my YouTube channel I have my my Facebook and I do I do a lot of other stuff consultancy so it's a bawi bawi lang, yeah. you, you can't you can't you know have it all but at yeah. least you know the the book helps you get around you know yeah uh, get known and get other projects and perhaps you know make money from other things but mm -hmm. the book itself is like you know eh. yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Me, I enjoyed <laughs> My my last book also Filipino because I got to go around the country and really learn and discover yeah. my cuisine. That's my takeaway from it, not really the yeah. Oh. I'm okay. sure you you spent more on airfare, <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed. I met a lot of yeah. people. Uh, I got to try different dishes. I went to people's houses. Why do you keep going and coming up with books if you don't learn a lot from it? <laughs> <laughs> me, I just really needed to get it out of my system. Mm. Like it need to get both, you know, in, in one way or another. Um, so it was cathartic. So it was it was very good. Um, but oh. that kind of that experience, like, really like got me thinking about like how uh, like the representation of. Filipinos or even like minorities in general are not being considered in even in the publishing world so mm -hmm. I mean that for me is like oh that makes me want to make more books so that there's more of our more, literature, more, of more representation, our representation. Yeah, more representation so that's why I want to make another book <laughs> mm -hmm. Brian? well I think it's quite similar to all of you I love you know mm -hmm. uh, exploring new cultures, eating new things, meeting new people, learning new things. I think that's something that I would do even if I wasn't writing. But I think that writing for me, if you're just, if you, if you're just talking about the act, putting something down, mm -hmm. there is, I think there's something quite powerful in that because you, in that way, you are forced to reckon with yourself. By teaching people, you actually mm -hmm. realize and you process things and you actually um, it becomes so clear what you actually don't get when you put something down uh, on paper. Yes. When I put something down, I feel that in a way I am, although I'm talking to the reader, I'm also having a conversation with myself and testing how much mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I, I quite like that process. Okay, as authors, you must have books or authors too who you turn to for inspiration. Yeah. Do you have, uh, please name them and how do they influence your career or your cookbook? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Me, Angelo. No, for me, for example, Culinaria, which is a well, collaborative mm -hmm. effort by some of the countries recognized chefs. It somehow mm -hmm. helps standardize Filipino dishes. Mm -hmm. But then again, yeah. nothing is strictly standardized in a cuisine that's so varied and diverse. But yeah. it really yeah. did help me a lot. I actually encountered Brian's book when I was researching. Mm -hmm. I like how 
to make my book. And oh. I really oh. like, like how, like even the format of the recipes, it was just like, it was so simple. It was straightforward, you know, and the story that goes with it. Like, so that, that format really inspired me to like, kind of make it like that. It's more conversational, it's more approachable. It's not like, yeah, this is your instructions. This is how you need to do it. Um, and also, Sikim um, by um, Doreen, mm. really also inspired me because yeah. it's like, I didn't grow up reading her work for some reason. Like I didn't even know about her until I moved here and I started cooking. So I feel like I missed out on a lot of these gems. And now yeah. I, I want to collect them all. <laughs> For for me, it's uh, I really got inspired by um, uh, Doreen Fernandez. You know, um, uh, there's this there's this essay by by Doreen, um, Culture Ingested, mm -hmm. one of her essays that really uh, provided a lot of insight in understanding how um, you know Filipino food evolved and uh, the phenomenon of um, indigenous. So uh, uh, it's in my tongue now. When you indigenize, when you indigenize foreign dishes into making it very Filipino, yeah. and that's that's really the essence of how how we cook, you no? Know? Even even in in my own practice right now, when when I'm cooking Filipino food in the context of today's kitchen, it's really indigenizing, um, you know, all these Western concepts, all these Western tex techniques into cooking what is relevant to the Filipino home right now. So that that really helped the insight that the writings of of Doreen really like help me shape my own philosophy of uh, filipino food of course along with angelo's books yeah i i i would say that Doreen really um uh when i was in cornell my friend actually got me this book i believe it was alayok it's just very. Oh, it's not a big book, really. Mm, yeah. But I think that yeah, released the yeah. tone. For, that released at the tone for my work, and of course, Bikim as well, which I only saw much, much later. <laughs> <Korea. laughs> because you, it's quite hard to get these books in Singapore. Mm. It is. So, yeah. yeah. Mm. Even in the Philippines, yeah. I don't have a copy myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> Even in the Philippines, it's hard to get a copy of those books now. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I yeah, found so. one here in LA, and she was wow. selling. For two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! <laughs> this is worth it. This is worth it. I promise. It is worth it. It is worth it. It is very worth it. But you know, I was like shit. <laughs> now, when you got the first copy of your book, how did it feel like? I think for me, it was just relief. Like I'm just like. No more editing, no more going back, no more changing things. This is it. Like, I birthed it, it's out in the world, I have zero control over it, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Do your thing, bro. Do your thing. <laughs> oh, I was, I was really very excited. It, parang, when when I when I got hold of the copies, parang I was like jumping around. You want to be jumping around? Like, you know, to, to be able to to hold something that you've been working on for 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 so long. And I was telling you, oh, my book is out, my book is out, and it's all that. So, parang you know, parang well, parang my first child. Parang ganon yeah. yung feeling. Yeah. You're, you're so excited, you're excited to tell the world about it. So, yon, uh, amazing, amazing experience. But for me, I don't know if it's true with you also. When I got the book, I felt happy. But then as I browsed through it, I was like, I should have done something else, not this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Always, all the time. <laughs> like, all the time. Like, okay, so it's not a solitary thing. It happened to you guys no, too. No, no. All yeah. the time. Yeah. <laughs> all the time. Like, yeah. sometimes I still see errors and I'm like, oh my God, this got printed. <laughs> Shit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Oh, no. I think for me it's like elation, mm -hmm. relief, and then I try not yeah. to look at it for a few days because I know if I did, I I, I would find something mm -hmm. I would not like. <laughs> yeah, so I try not. Once it's done, it's done. Yeah. I look forward to the next book. So I can make a better book. Too. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that is true. That is very, very true. Now we talked about marketing the book earlier on. How did you guys market your own book? It was 
literally like just through Kickstarter, Facebook, social media, that's it. I mean, I only printed like a limited copies. Like it was a thousand books. That was it. So yeah. <laughs> like, I have, I have no pressure to like, <laughs> you know, I mean, I didn't make money. I'm going to say it out loud. No <laughs> there. In fact, I actually like was on the negative because of the printing costs and other things, but at the end, I was like, this is great. Like, it's out there. People who signed up for it, like now we're getting it. And now people want to buy more. And I'm like, I don't have any more copies. <laughs> but yeah. Brian? Social media, basically. Yeah. And there, there, were, there were a few articles out. There were a few articles out. Uh, uh, that in both Philippines and on Singapore story that really really helped. But yeah, I I can I do concur with whatever was discussed earlier on in that we have got to do a lot of the work ourselves. Mm. We can't really rely on the distributors or whatnot to do it. Yeah. Uh, you know, so a lot of it it really is a labor of love, isn't it? It is. I don't. I, I actually don't think that the writing bit is the most difficult. I think it probably is the marketing. Bit. Marketing. I, yeah, I think I. I think that's quite tough because in in, in a way uh, you've got very little control over the reception social media is one thing because in a way we can promote our you know we can promote our books our restaurants on on on, on social media but hoping that someone would write about it oh that's quite tough that really is quite tough i think that really is the luck of the draw if someone thinks that your work is is interesting enough to you know to feature on a newspaper yeah mm. Yeah, so I so I, I would say that's quite challenging. How about our celebrity chef? I think I'm, I'm the most fortunate here, you know. So uh, it's because the, the publisher, the publisher of my uh, book is uh, uh, was was ba? the biggest <laughs> network in the Philippines before it was closed down. But oh no! <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, ABS CBN. Oh, yeah. oh. So, uh, anyway, I had everything, you know, in my favor at that time because I had a, uh, uh, I was a regular host on the morning show, so that was something that was a top rating show. Um, uh, the the network also produced a four part mini documentary series for me on the Lifestyle Channel at that time. We did we did book tours and all that. So, but I, I was also like practically unknown unknown to a lot of people yet because that was my first book and you know so it was difficult trying to get known as a as an author. But I had the advantage of uh, the network, so they were using like syndicated <laughs> press releases and all that. So that was really the advantage, uh, my advantage at that point. So up to now, I'm still. You know, benefiting from from that, so it's easy to 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 release books. Um, but yeah, it's that. It's really it's really that that effort. It's really you know the reach. Like yeah. w when I published the first book, when was that? Like four years ago. Social media was there, but is it as crazy as it is yeah, today? Yeah, 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 yeah. There was no Instagram yet. There was no, a, a few things. So it was it was quite a struggle because. Though we had a lot of exposure on TV, the bookstores didn't want to sell the book right away. Mm. You know, but you have to. They have to screen the book and say, "Now, ah, oh, will this sell or 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 not?" So they had to have a wait and see. So when we started, it was just like national bookstore who 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 got a few copies, and later on, the other bookstores followed suit. So you know, it's a challenge. Also, now you can have so much so much exposure, but nobody actually wants to to sell your book. Now for those who want to author a book, what would you suggest they do? How do they start writing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't write a press release before you write the book. <laughs> you need to have a lot of money to be able to do a book. Where do they start? How do they start? I think it depends on the kind of book they want to write. Mm -hmm. I mean, cookbook, yes, but what kind of cookbook do you want to write? I think that if you want to produce something that um, doesn't require you to, to travel, mm. yes. I, 
in a way, if you think about it from um, from a financial perspective, that may be a more sound choice because you've got. I'm assu assuming that you've got the you you already have the wherewithal to produce this book, mm. and then it's just a case of printing costs, perhaps mm. getting a graphic designer, blah blah blah. Mm. But if you require, if you have to move around, I think that's that can really be expensive. Yeah, mm. that's a really hard bit. And if you're doing something that is um, uh, perhaps not so well known, you you want to reach out to people of communities that are perhaps not so, or you know, you want to talk about dishes that dishes that aren't so well known. I've it can also be quite uh, not not just expensive in terms of money, but expensive in terms of time because you've got to really wait for the information to come to you. It's almost as though the land is saying, you're not ready yet. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a while longer and then come back a few months later. Yeah. You know? oh. So, so I, I, I have found that in a way you're, you're at their mercy. A lot has been featured and said and written about Filipino cuisine already. What other subjects about local or, or local cuisine are we missing? Actually, for me, I think that the focus on really um, cooking techniques, methods, I think I think that's that's one of the problems that um, you know um, a lot of cooks encounter nowadays is that how to cook it. You know, like all the recipes are just floating in the air, but understanding understanding like the mechanics of what is a proper gisa, what what mm. what are the criteria to you know to do a proper gisa, what's a What's a sangkutcha? What's the technicality of a sangkutcha? That's why I want to. One of my dream projects, probably Angelo, you can help me. Um, I I I, I, had, I was talking with the Commission on Wikna Filipino, the, the Commission on the Filipino Language, is to be able to come up with a cookbook on Filipino culinary terminology, so that we're talking about the same things. Because I think even if we if we write a lot of cookbooks, but in terms of understanding the the context of um, mm -hmm. recipes and procedures are not the same it's going to be very difficult like um like the gisa for itself the gisa has to at the long there's a context it's the gisa not the spanish gisa where you saute yeah. the aromatics to make a sauce and the gisa in the chinese sense where it's it's stir fried and it has to be firm not wilted because they eat with chopsticks but we use the same term gisa yeah. So when we're, when we're when we're teaching the recipe, what is the context of the terminology we're using? That's what that's what I really want to do. Pero, uh, pero I think it's such a you know difficult. It's like a lot of work. Project. Project. A lot. Of work. So, uh, not, not now. Not now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think for me, um, what I've been missing or what what I wanted to really delve into, and I think it's gonna be impossible, but maybe we can all work on it together. I want to um, write a book about like the making of soy sauce, the making of bagoong, the making of, you know, vinegars. So like yeah. all of these things that we use because obviously the Filipino soy sauce is very different from the Chinese soy sauce. You know, yeah. our vinegars, there's so many kinds of vinegars. How do we eat them? How can we, you know, and even the, what do you call that? The the fermented rice, the burro? Like, yeah. yeah, like how can we make that, you know, ourselves and not have to dig on the ground, you know, <laughs> and leave it for three weeks. And like how to make the salted egg in our modern kitchen, like all of these things. How about you, Brian? What's your dream book? When I'm researching my book, I'm always looking for things that are uh, becoming increasingly hard to find. I read somewhere about, um, and she said, I think Chef, maybe you may have heard of this. Mm. I think it's called, and forgive me if I get the mm. name wrong, I think it's called Sinakol or something like that, where it's actually like steamed, um, uh, uh, it's like a steamed cake. Mm. It's a bit like, mm. a, a bit no? like a potato, huh? yeah, but it's made from ground corn. And they actually mm. consume it with uh, kinilau. And so there's a pairing there. There's a pairing there. Actually, okay, that's mm. something else I'm very interested in. Actually, yeah. food pairings in the Philippines. Yeah. I think are yeah. very. You guys have some very very interesting food pairings. Yeah. More, more has got to be written on that. Thank you so much, guys. It was yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. This is an awesome global thing. Stay safe and keep in touch. All of you too, please. Okay. All of you.
Take care of yourselves. Thank you. Bye. Bye.